administration is giving Texas until tomorrow to let federal agents back in. Uh, joining us now is Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz. Senator, great to have you here today. Jump on in here. I mean, this is a standoff between Abbott and the White House. Where does it go? Well, listen, I, Texas is right, and I'm proud to stand with our governor. I'm proud to stand with our state legislature. Joe Biden has created a crisis, and, and he has created what is an invasion of the state of Texas, and it's an invasion of the country. Under Biden, 9.6 million illegal immigrants have come into this country. This is deliberate. It is massive. And, and under federal law, it is the federal government's responsibility to stop this, but, but Joe Biden and the Washington Democrats are defying federal law. And so the state of Texas is stepping up and saying, we're going to defend ourselves. And, and, and Greg Abbott is exactly right that, that Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution gives states the authority, what Justice Scalia referred to as the sovereign rights of states, to protect themselves from an invasion. That's what Texas is doing. Well, so... So, Senator, you know, you've heard the president time and time again saying that, look, I want to resolve this border crisis. We know it's a problem, but we need Congress to give us the money to do it. And the Senate is working on this border bill. Uh, you have blasted it, yeah. obviously. And now there's this other reporting coming out suggesting that maybe the uh, Mitch McConnell and, and mm -hmm. you know, leadership is pulling back their support for it. What is going on there? Are Republicans really going to back away from an issue that they keep saying needs to be solved? So let me break that into two pieces. You, you started by what Biden is saying, and I'll tell you what Biden is saying on that. There's a technical term for that. <laughs> That's called a lie. And, it, and it's not just a little bit of a lie. It is a brazen, it, it is the definition of chutzpah. Here's why. When Joe Biden became president, he inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. He inherited great success. And he deliberately broke the border. He opened up the border. Three decisions caused this crisis. His first week in office, Joe Biden halted construction of the border wall. He reinstated catch and release, and he pulled out of the incredibly successful Remain in Mexico agreement. And those decisions caused illegal immigration to skyrocket. Now, the reason he's lying, he doesn't need more money. Those decisions, he could, Biden could solve this problem tomorrow. He doesn't want to. So are you saying that, that, that there's no reason to have a border bill? We, act, we don't need a border bill. We, we achieved the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years under Donald Trump. What was different is you had a president that wanted to secure the border. Joe Biden is defying the law right now. And, and so you asked about the border deal. Listen. I'm all for using every leverage we have to try to force Biden to comply with the law, but this deal doesn't do that. This deal was negotiated with Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer doesn't want to secure the border. They, he looks at 9.6 million illegal immigrants, and what he sees is future Democrat voters, and he's willing to overlook the death, the suffering, the women and children being brutalized by human traffickers. All of those are acceptable prices to pay for Democrats to stay in power. I mean, it, it's coming down to a simple question, Senator. Do we have a border? Yeah. Martha put this to John Kirby on her program yesterday. Watch this exchange. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of fire in his belly, John, to stop people from entering. It seems that he, he wants He's okay with the opposite. I don't think he's lacking any sense of urgency about the need for border security at all. You say there's no lack of urgency. He's been president for three years. He has taken some executive actions, but there's a limit to what executive action can do, and we really need support from Congress. Do we have a go. southern border? Do we have a what? Do we have a southern border? Yes, ma'am. Of course we then do. Then how come people can flow across it every single day? We're working very hard to try to fix that, Martha. That's why we need congressional action. That's why the president asked for additional funding. If we have thousands and thousands and thousands of people flowing over that border every day, do we have a border? Uh, we don't. We have an open border, and that is by design. And by the way, the White House has claimed they need more money. The money they want is more money to process illegal immigrants more quickly. They want 9.6 million to become 20 million, 30 million, 40 million. They want to speed this up. They want more illegal immigration. And, and understand, it's not that Joe Biden is, is bad at his job, that he's negligent, that he doesn't know how to do it. He wants this crisis because he gets a political benefit, he believes, from it. He could solve it overnight because he caused it overnight. You, you know, Sandra, I spend a lot of time on the southern border. I go out on midnight patrol with the border patrol agents. When you do that, 
you're not looking for illegal immigrants. They look for you. They find you. They turn themselves into you. And the reason they do so is as soon as they do, the Biden administration asks them, hey, where would you like to go? And they, they say, I want to go to New York. I want to go to Boston. I want to go to Dallas. I want to go to Miami. And the Biden administration puts them on a plane or on a bus and sends them to every city in America. So every city in America is a border city right now. If you want to solve this problem, Donald Trump, when he's reelected in January of next year, will solve this problem. And he'll do so by one thing and one thing alone. When someone's apprehended, you put them on a plane, you fly them back home and the crisis goes away. Senator, your Republican colleague, Lindsey Graham, just recently said that to any of my colleagues who think you're going to get a better border deal under President Trump, you won't. And this bill that has been negotiated gives real tools to the next president. Uh, is, is your position then that nothing is better than something? And, and have you even read this bill to be able to say that? So I haven't read the bill, and there's a reason. Nobody's read the bill. They won't actually give us the text. So the reason they won't give us the text, the way it works in Washington, if you're hiding the text, it means it's even worse than people think it is. It means if people knew what was in it, they'd be even more upset. All they've given us is some general bullet points, but I'll tell you what they have done. One of those bullet points is this effectively normalizes 5,000 illegal immigrants a day. 5,000 a day, that works out to over 1.8 million illegal immigrants a year. That is utterly unacceptable. That's nearly 6 million illegal immigrants under Joe Biden. So apparently the Republican position is we'll take two-thirds of the border crisis. Look, the answer needs to be fix it and solve it, and we can do yeah. that. Trump or any Republican president willing to enforce the law doesn't need this bill to do that. They can go back. You reverse those three decisions Biden made. You build the wall, you end catch and release, and you reinstate uh, the Remain in Mexico agreement, and the numbers will plummet again, just yeah. like they did three years ago. Senator, um, one of your roles in Washington is also the top Republican on the Commerce, Science, and Transportation yeah. Committee. I know you met with the CEO of Boeing this morning. I want to get your thoughts on what you heard from him, as we know there are major problems in the skies with these planes and how they're built. Um, this was Hillary Vaughn, our reporter, stopped him in the hallway and got this question to him. Watch. Mr. Calhoun, how do you win customers back who say they're never going to get on a Boeing plane again because they don't feel safe? Mr. Calhoun, how do you get those customers back who say they're too scared to get on a Boeing plane? You don't have any words of assurance for customers who are too scared to fly on a Boeing plane? We believe in our airplanes. We field safe airplanes. Our people do. We have confidence in the safety of our airplanes. And that's what all of this is about. And we fully understand the gravity. But one of your planes fell apart in the sky. I mean, you've got loose bolts. You've got a door blowing off mid-flight. What did you hear from the CEO? Well, I spent about an, about an hour this morning meeting with the CEO in my office. And, and, and I expressed to him I'm very concerned. I think Texans and Americans are very concerned. Uh, about uh, the accident that happened on Alaska Airlines, a door blowing out of a plane while it's flying at 16,000 feet. It is a miracle that no one was killed in that accident. It's a miracle that there were not more serious injuries. Had they been at a higher altitude, everyone on that plane could have been killed. And, and the number one priority has to be protecting the safety of the flying public. And so, so the question y'all were asking there is critically important. I spent about an hour pressing uh, pressing the CEO that, 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 listen, Boeing needs to make certain that its manufacturing processes, that its quality control is excellent because millions of Americans depend on it. When you put your family, when you put your kids on a plane, you need to be confident that your kids are going to be safe and secure. And, and I urged him, I said, this is a crisis for Boeing, and, and, and Boeing needs to respond with transparency, in Congress, the Commerce Committee, we are engaged in an investigation right now to determine exactly the causes of this accident. Last week, I brought in both the FAA and the National Traffic uh, Safety Board to brief members of the committee. That Their investigation is ongoing. I think soon we will get a preliminary report. But we need to make certain this accident never happens again. And, and, and Boeing, I, I hope they are taking it as seriously as they need to. Boeing historically is a great American company, and I yeah. want Boeing to continue being a great American company, but they got to make sure they're producing planes that are safe for the American yeah, people. Definitely some